Barbacar Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy of downtown Johnson City, Crown Cuts Academy in Bristol, Virginia, and now Proficient Nail Academy in downtown JC. Spread in love the JC way. They say that's the only way, but you know what? Spread in love the Crown Cuts way is one of the other ways we can spread love too. And my co-host himself, Jordan Barr from Bristol, Tennessee, representing Studio 423. Jay Bob on Instagram. Hope everybody's having a good day. And today we're going to have a banging episode for you guys. We got something totally special, totally different than you, than you can ever think of. But I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves and we're going to jump into the topic. Let's go. Yo, it's Noor. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. I'm a barber there. I've been barbering now for two years. Mm, major, major. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Noor. Uh, my name is Clark, and I'm actually a student master barber at Crown Cuts Academy here in Johnson City, Tennessee. Yes. So we're going to have this topic, and I think this topic is important because a lot of times some people get misrepresented and some people get cast to the side. And, and in our industry, everyone should be welcome. There should be no discrimination on no level. And I think it's important because our goal is community-based. Our goal is to educate. Our goal is to take care of the people who take care of us. And a lot of times, as barbers, we don't know how to handle certain situations. So hopefully this can kind of spread a light and cover some topics and some areas that can help you better yourself, increase your business, and don't leave no stone unturned. Boom. So today we're going to talk about queer and LBGTQ plus in the barbering space and how, how, we can, how we can help. How we can help people feel comfortable in the industry, how we can help people feel comfortable in barbershops. Because, hey, it's here. This is 2024, and we have to be able to spread love. So, Noah, when, I, when, when we talked about this topic, what was going through your mind? What did you think about, about this topic? Because I know we talked about it numerous times while you come on the podcast. But why is this important to, to express and talk about? For sure. I think um, barbering is historically made for men. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I feel like it's important to shed light on a queer space, um, specifically for the trans community, the community, the LGBTQ plus community, because I just feel like a lot of people get messed up in salons. Mm -hmm. um, always, you know, getting a pixie cut or um, more of a feminine haircut, and I feel like. I create spaces where I can give a masculine haircut. Right. Uh, so I think it's really important to, to make people feel confident when they're leaving. Right. Sure. right. What, do, what do you think, Clark? I mean, even like, for instance, when you go into a barbershop, if you, if you look at the price sheet, it says men's haircut. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not like a genderless service. Even though I do have short hair, I have to ask for a men's fade, a men's right. haircut. And I think having queer LGBT, you know, in the barber industry, that shows representation. It shows that there's a safe place for you. Right. You can feel comfortable coming to me and asking for a masculine haircut, like you always said. And you know, that's something I didn't even think about. Having just a category saying, you know what I mean? That, that's just, that is so important because when people see that, they more apt to want to spend right. with you and feel more comfortable because first off, you're going into a barbershop not knowing what to expect. Right. And all you want to do is just go in and get a haircut and retreat like everyone else. Right. What, what do you think, Jay? I feel like that'd be I feel like that'd be dope. Um, obviously, I feel like it's good for a shop to be kind of well, mm -hmm. women, like men and women, and you know people that are. What? It's good to have a good diverse barbershop, so that way anybody that walks in through the door doesn't feel like, you know, like I got to like, might feel a little bit uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> and you can charge based off of me. You know, if you're getting a short haircut, a medium haircut, right. long haircut versus. You getting a man haircut or you getting a woman haircut? Cause some barbers, just, me for instance, if I'm calling up, yeah, I'm a woman, I want my haircut. Y'all are gonna tell me no without even seeing. Right. I just want a fade, you know. For sure. I'm a woman, and that's kind of the culture that barbershops give. Absolutely. But just starting off with that, saying, even as small as having that on the price list to show that, hey. You are accepted. That makes you feel comfortable. Right. Yeah. That makes you smile. It's something so slight. Like, right. You know, I've been in many barbershops where I felt like I had to prove myself uh -huh. to them. And it's like, I just want a simple fade. I just want to look clean and then just go about my day. 
Mm. For sure. So how did you get started in the barbering profession? How has your journey been influenced by your LGBTQ um, plus identity and queer nature? How did, how, how did, how did you get started in that? For sure. So I, um, I came from Chicago and um, at my high school, there was a lot of um, people who looked like me right. who got cool fades, the taper, the blowouts. And I was just like, dude, that's exactly what I'm going for. And I didn't really know where to like search for that. So I kept asking around. And um, eventually I actually went to the mall and there was a barbershop in the mall. This guy named Lou was cutting hair and he just looked so dope, man. Like he just was super cool and laid back. And he definitely inspired me to, to ask him questions, to ask, how do I get into this profession? How do I, um, how do I apply? Can you teach me? And every time I asked him, can you teach me? He would just say, no, go to barber school. Right. Uh, but of course that was totally cool on his part. Like now that I'm a barber, I see how hard it is to just teach a random person how to barber, you know what I mean? So, um, but I just, I came from a salon, the salon kept doing me wrong. And then eventually when I found him, I was very impressed with his work. So I just kind of went along those lines. And because I would think, it. here and here you speak, what I'm thinking going through my mind right now, some, a lot of people in that space, they think the only place for them to go is a hair salon. Right. And you don't want to go to a hair salon. Right. And you want a, a cut, you want a barber cut. Right. And, but sometimes in that environment is so masculine and so um, barbaric at times, to say right. the least, but just more masculine and masculine tip. Sometimes that could be intimidating for people in the space to come into. Absolutely, mm. yes. Um, but he kind of helped me see otherwise. Mm. And especially because my friends were going to him, I felt right. comfortable going to him. Um, and then I kind of just thought about it, you know, for a few years before actually like applying myself to barber school. Mm -hmm. And um, my only thought was, I really want to make this a queer space. I really want other people to follow my footsteps, my lead to, um, to see that it doesn't have to just be a man thing to do right. to go get your hair cut. What do you um, think, Clark? So, yeah. so for me, a lot of people, they'll, they'll see people succeed and they get jealous. They're like, uh oh, how are they doing that? For me, I saw somebody succeeding and I was like, I'm trying to get it like they are. So, you know, Jess Shepard, shout out to Jess, but she made that safe environment for me down at, uh, Crown Cut downtown. Right. I was going to her when I was about 21 years old, and it was nice to have representation, another queer person, and mm -hmm. she made the environment welcoming. You know, we go in there, we play dominoes, we watch sports, right. we lift weights in there. Like, so you, just cool. wanna, you just want to feel accepted, feel exactly. comfortable, we want to be judged. Yeah. Jess was just already out there representing for me, and I saw the way that people would be in her chair, they get their cut, and they'd look in the mirror whole different person, so right. much confidence, you know, you, she changed her life blessing them. And I was like, I want to be able to make people feel like exactly. that. I want, I want a little girl who may be scared to express herself to mm -hmm. be able to look up to me and say, you know, Clark did it. Clark made this a safe space. And even if I don't feel comfortable anywhere else, I feel comfortable here. Right. I relate to that for sure. You got to be the change you want to see. Exactly. Know? If I became an instructor and started um, <clears throat> teaching at the school, I had a client of mine and at the time, I didn't know, I was just cutting her hair, and she was just really cool. Um, I was cutting the hair, and I didn't realize that she was transitioning. Mm. And years later, we had a conversation, and she said, Craig, you don't realize what I was going through at the time you was cutting my hair. You made me so, feel so comfortable because initially I was so afraid, and when I transitioned, and her name was Aaliyah, and it's Aiden now. Oh, I know, I know Aiden. Yeah, and a good friend of mine, and I remember her, tell, and, and I didn't look at her try to, I wasn't, I wasn't judging her, I just, when she came now, we dapped up, a hug, got a haircut, and it just made me realize that, man, you have to really, some people probably feel so uncomfortable going in spaces that we as barbers, we have to be careful of the words we say and how we make people feel, because people sometimes just want to come in and just get a normal haircut. Sometimes people just want to come in and just ha have a conversation and be in a normal set like everybody else. But sometimes the conversation that we have, the words we use can be harmful. And we know the, the words that can be harmful in a setting like that. Yeah. And barbershop at times, some of the words that comes out, it could be harm it is harmful. It is harmful. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So as barbers, we have to pay close attention and think about the, sta the space that we have because for so long, barbering is an industry that 
it's, it's, it's a safe place. Right. It's a safe place. People come for advice. People come for comfort. People come for just, just for the basic necessities, just to get away from the rat race of life. Right. And for barbers out there, pay attention. Think about how you administering your service and think about how you're talking to people because you don't know who you are offending. Right. I think a really important point to make is um, every time I begin a service, mm -hmm. I always ask their pronouns. Because right. I don't know. You come in, into the shop, I always say, hey, how's it going? What's your pronouns? Right. Out of respect. And if it's they, them, if it's she, her, if it's he, him, automatically, okay, no problem. And I continue with the service because that just automatically makes a person feel safe and comfortable. And, and, and that's a good point. But at the same token, I could see some barbers saying, you say that to a regular person. How, how do you combat that? Because saying that to a regular person could offend that regular person too. You know what I mean? It could. It so, could for sure. Me personally. Because, because this is the teacher moment as well. Barbers. Absolutely. Me personally, I'm not going to lie. I get called he all the time and it does kind of hurt my feelings. I think... I'm a, a beautiful woman, you know exactly. what I mean? Same. But <laughs> I can tell he, at that, uh, the first initial he, I'm going to take and educate you. You know, hey, I am a woman. I do like to call her and she. Right. Mm -hmm. If it happens again, you know, I do get kind of offended because I've gone out of my way to let you know how you can accommodate me. Right. I don't feel like I'm asking too much. I, I was born a woman. I am a woman. Just call me a woman. Don't assume I'm transitioning because... Right. My hair is short, or, you know what I mean? So, so, so that's a tricky, that's a tricky mm -hmm. thing, because both of you guys, it's a gray area. So how, how, what is the best way to handle that? I mean, like she said, she yeah, I would just ask. ask, I would just ask like the first time, like, I mean, because kinda, cause think about it, some people who are straight. You, Chris, like even just, hey, what's your pronoun? Right. You know, that's not going to offend just everyone. No, I, say, I, I was just say, I feel like, if you're offended by that, just for somebody asking if, if you are, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm mean, you can see, but not You can really. see both. Because some people are so masculine, whatever, like... Yeah, they're this, like, what do you mean? Some, like, so, to not, so how do you straddle that pole without offending either party? I don't party? take the risk, I feel like, and ask, hey, what are your right. pronouns? Versus just offending somebody. Right. Yeah. I could offend quite often getting called to I've never claimed Same. my life that, and I don't right. know where that notion comes from. Right. Other than just yeah. being masculine. Other than just being Same. part, you know? Exactly. I just feel like, um, I also cater to a lot of queer people so I just kind of know like to ask and mm -hmm. who to ask like I get a lot of military as well and I just I'm too scared to ask so but, I just so, said, <laughs> so I'm just like I'm just not gonna ask him I just know that that I just know not to ask because but so you got to kind of feel the temperature I, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta read the room right. I just feel like in Asheville it's such a blue bubble it's such a queer dynamic mm -hmm. and and I know a lot of the people in the area. I see them at, you know, gay clubs and bars and like, I just, Different. yeah, I just know in Asheville specifically to ask a certain person. So, so the question is, how do we create a welcoming and inclusive environment for all clients of gender identities and sexuality <laughs> orientation? How, how I do think, we? I think one of the best things to do is put a, a gay flag or put like a sign that says all is welcome here. Mm -hmm. Religion, sexuality, you know, like gender, everything. Because when I first moved to Asheville, I saw that sign and I automatically felt like, okay, I'm not gonna get hate crime here, right. like I'm good. So I feel like that's, you know, a good way to, to start. What do you think, For Mark? me personally, something that I try to implement and try to do is like, if Jordan goes to the barbershop, for instance, and he takes his girlfriend with him, what's she gonna do? She's gonna sit there and wait on his hair to get cut. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk up to Jordan's girlfriend and say, "Hey, while you're waiting, would you like your hair shampooed? Mm -hmm. You know, would you, would you like a blow dry and a style? And that's a way we can include women into the barbershop. You know, you may not want to fade their hair. They may not want to fade. You may not know how to use the shears. Great point. You can still offer them a shampoo service, a basic manicure, a basic facial. There's so many services that we already have that are genderless. We're just not thinking about it. You know, and that's how you can include people by just thinking." And, and, and that's a great point. And that's the hope for this podcast, right. to kind of get people educated so we can learn because the ultimate goal is, is to be able to have a wonderful career, be able to take care of yourself and your family and think about all this because we are who we are because of others. Right. And if we think we can do this by ourselves, we're wrong. Uh -uh. Take the village. It takes a village, 100%. That's what, what, what do you think, Jay? <laughs> what, what, what are ways you think, <laughs> as you hear Nor and Clark speak, what are ways you think that we could include people into the in our space. Mm -hmm. I said they both kind of both on the money. It's kind of like 
what I, they kind of stole what I was going to say a little bit. Uh, <laughs> what else could it? Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I think the first thing is when people walk into a, a, an establishment, just greet them. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. Right. How's your day going? Absolutely. Something as subtle as that sometimes will kind of break the ice. Absolutely. Because if someone comes in, I'm thinking who is um, in that space and they come in and no one acknowledges them, I'm thinking that automatically the defense is coming up. Right. That's true. Why are you not? Is it because? Yes, yeah, you just did it to him. So just the basic necessity is that you're taught from a young age. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Welcome to Crowdcast Academy. Welcome to whatever, whatever barbershop. Welcome to whatever, that, whatever space. I think this is those basic things help right. a lot. What do you guys think? I mean, it's exactly like you said. It starts with just being a good human being. Just like if you walked into a barbershop, what reaction would you want? Exactly. Because I, I remember being in the shop and that, that old, we used to have some women come in and they'll ask somebody, yeah, do you do women's hair? Everybody else would say no. But I always said yes. Thanks. But I was like, and it's kind of, I felt the, the shift and the, the change in the shop, you know, when, when females walked in. Because they were kind of a little bit nervous. Yeah. Right. The you know, tension is yeah, crazy, Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, snap. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, even so, the tension yeah. is, crazy is crazy for a female, or just for like I'm thinking about from the perspective of, of a queer or LGBTQ, whatever. Is that for that space? Is that 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 you feel that tension coming into a shop? Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, I have some people that come in with long hair and they have like an undercut and mm -hmm. they want to get that shaped up, um, and they see me right away and they're like, "Oh, I'm at a perfect, I'm at a perfect shop. I feel comfortable automatically." Right. I have a lot of women and people come to me and be like, just because you're standing there, I seen, I seen your uh, outfit and your style, that just made me feel like, oh, this is a place I can come that's to. That's what's up. I mean, because it's important, you say something? It is really important. I mean, no, I mean, that's important because making someone feel, no one should have to go into a spot where they tighten up. Right. And you're already thinking that, man, they staring at me, they judging me, but right. then you probably not, you, you're gonna be so tense, it could cause you to not get a good service. Right. And I think to like kind of piggyback off what Noir said, while we are creating that safe space for women, for LGBT, we also, like me personally, I feel like where I do make that safe space for women, I have other barbers looking at me like, okay, we get women, Clark's gonna do the women haircuts. Like, right. sometimes they're like, yeah. I'm gonna I'm a steal this haircut, I'm gonna do this thing. Clark's right. gonna do the women, you know? And no, right. no it's, it's versatile, yep. you know? I don't wanna For be sure. labeled as one thing in the barber industry. I wanna be a right. family barber. Bring your wife, bring your husband, bring your kids, bring everybody to me. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So what changes or improvements would you like to see in terms of representation within the barber industry? A great question. You want to start with that? It just starts behind the chair. Like Noy said, if I walk into a barbershop and I see her there, I'm automatically feeling more comfortable. I'm, or, I'm automatically feeling more accepted. So we have to be that change to create safe places for people to want to come and, and be themselves, you know, and be an LGBT barber or be an LGBT client or just come in the shop and hang out. I used to go to your shop. And I would just go and play dominoes. I'd already had my hair cut the, the week before and just hang out. And that's the environment we need to create for people like us, you know? Right. What about the, um, the tools, the equipment, the implements? Would you like to see any changes as it refers to that? Or um, just like a, um, a pair of clippers that might be, that might have rainbow on it. Right. Or That'd something. be pretty cool. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's something or a rainbow a, cape or something. Right? Some, yeah. A different perspective. I feel like that's definitely dope. Or like something as simple as you said, just all accepted. You know, you don't have to go out of your way right. specifically to promote right. the LGBT by wearing rainbows and right. stuff, but just making it a safe environment right. for all, whether you're gay, whether you're straight. It, it, don't it doesn't matter, matter. exactly. Way. We just want to be seen as people. We right. want to be seen as what we feel comfortable in. And So the tools doesn't you know matter. I, like just, the, I, yeah. I don't it's really cool want to stick out like a rainbow. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to blend in like the rest of y'all. I don't want yeah. somebody to be like, Oh, Clark's gay. We gotta accommodate her extra. Right. Just treat me like I'm normal, the same way that you get. We're not trying to be. We're not trying to be men. I feel like a lot of people think like we're trying to be men because mm -hmm. we have short haircuts, because we wear masculine clothing. It's just a cool style that we we look up to, we admire, we want to want to embrace. You know, we want to be a part of the community as a whole. It doesn't have to just be the LGBTQ plus. It, it's an, it's an umbrella, and I feel like humanity just needs more kindness. And, and naturally, right. you, you you make someone Preach. feel welcome. They're gonna patronize you. 
Right. And they're going to be happy to come into your space. Right. And then, it, then they'll let someone else know that, hey, that's it. I, I went in there. I feel really good. They treated me so amazing, so comfortable. Yeah, like family. All the time, right? right? So I had a conversation with Clark last week, right? And I said, man, Nora always said, I, I've done so much for her. And yeah. like, I tell her all the time, I don't know what I've done for her. Clark <laughs> said, oh, man, just, you, you're just talking to her. <laughs> just being a good just person in somebody's life, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't know like, how many like, people just like, need a good person. I appreciate yeah. that. And, and, no, and Clark was like, man, just, you just don't know how you're just talking to someone just and being so I just genuine. Feel, I yeah. feel seen. And, I feel heard. And right. that's what people want. People want to feel seen like a genuine person in their life to exactly. see them or hear them. So the fact that you look them in the eyes when they're speaking, you listen to what they're saying, you're making a difference just by doing that because not everybody has that. Right. And again, this is the teaching moment because right now we are um, top 25 podcasts in the world. We're in over 77 countries. We have listeners from across the globe. And I think this podcast right here is an opportunity for people to learn and understand and, and, and learn from a teaching moment because on both sides, I don't think people know how to handle each other mm -hmm. um, because it shouldn't be to a point where you have to think about how to be graceful. We should yeah. have to think about how to be polite. Don't walk on eggshells around me. Just treat me like I'm any, just treat me like a regular woman. You right. know what I mean? I'm no different. And, and that's important to hear people to hear that because some people will be thinking like, oh, I can't. Can't and, say certain things. Yeah, and, and you, you want a it. joke. You want to be in a barbershop and crack joke. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And laugh at a joke. Right. You know what I mean? And and people, but you just got to remember people are people right. at the end of the day. You yep. know, yep. Just like people are people. What offends me might not might, might not offend me. Right. right. You know what I mean? That's everybody everybody has their own. Everybody's, everybody's their own person. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't think I have to do this because they're queer. Like it's right. catered just, to every individual person. Right. I feel like this topic this topic is really important it because is. it doesn't get talked about. Right. Because, and that's why I was, I was happy to yeah. kind of bring it to the forefront because I think people are there. Bottom line, and know how to handle situations. Right. And then it'd be a teaching moment for you and someone else. Right. Yeah. I feel like. Um, talking about anything that doesn't get talked about just progresses yes. humanity as a whole. Exactly. C can you share an um, instance yeah. where you went into a space and you didn't feel comfortable and how you handled it? Yes. Which one? Which one? <laughs> well, let's just like the book. <laughs> uh, Y'all good over there? Y'all good uh, over there? Y'all good? We got some guests on the side. They come in there thinking about starting a podcast and shout them out in the corner. And what's your podcast name again? I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm hey, tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I think we're all tired of it. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. we're all tired of it. We're back sure. to the lecture on hand. Um, so again, yeah, share, share a moment with, and how you heal and how, just talk about that. You said which one? Let's see. Let's yeah. See. Are we talking about specifically barbering or just a moment just in general? Just barbering. Yeah, I think about this one. Hold on. You got one, Clark? So I just feel like it doesn't even, not even just being a queer barber a female barber mm -hmm. when you are a female mm -hmm. barber you have to prove yourself so much so more. much more so much and more, the bro. thing is <laughs> i can i can tell jordan the same thing that you're about to tell him but he's not gonna listen to me mm -hmm. he wants to hear it from, from a man you know what i mean and so just being a female in a male dominated industry you know like and being in the space being so you, so you have like a you think you have like a double whammy against you exactly oh, but for sure if, I, if I will anything, say i do think it's a, a lot harder for women Especially. It is so much harder. But also, it's all about uh, confidence in yourself. Right. You just got to believe exactly. in yourself. And you got to be surrounded by people that actually want to see you succeed, too. Because yeah. I, I would have, it's just like a new barber coming in in the shop, pretty much. And they'll be like, I don't know if he's able to cut. And I'll be like, I'm over there cutting somebody. I'm like, bro, I'll pay you. I'll pay for your haircut if you let my boy cut your hair. Like, yeah. or if I, I'll pay for your haircut for her if you let her cut your hair. Like, that's, that's little stuff like that. Just to help them be more confident in themselves. And, I mean... I'm just helping them out a little bit, that's all. In that okay. space, though, uh, you know, me personally, I'm the only advocate I really have. I don't have other men barbers like, yo, Clark's cold with it. Y'all y'all need to get hit up Clark. It's not like that. And I see in the barber community uh, other men lifting other men up. And I'm thinking, it, is it because I'm female? You know what I mean? Is it because I'm queer? Right. What what could it be? Why, why are we not getting treated the same? Mm. So For sure. I've definitely been, like, rejected by older men who like walk in the shop like there's i want to say my barber shop is probably like almost 80 percent women mm -hmm. who work there and um still we have older men that walk in <clears throat> that will be like 
I don't want her touching my hair or like she can't and, cut and hair. And you're a great barber. You're a beast of a barber. I, I see you. your She's work. She's with it, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I mean, I just, level. at this point in my barbering career, I feel like I stopped having to, to prove myself to ignorant people. Mm -hmm. I right. feel like who wants to sit in my chair? You're welcome to sit in my chair. If you don't want to sit in my chair, you go to Johnny or you go right. to whoever, you know, like that's fine. At this point in my life, I just, I'm not trying to, I don't seek validation from other people anymore. I seek validation from myself. But it is kind of difficult somebody coming and not giving you justice. For sure. And that you work hard at. And I cry a little bit. This, <laughs> this is your passion and you're passionate about this. For sure. You no, know, you can have, you can beast this cut out and you can get some great work and you take it to the next level. And, and I, I bet that's kind of tough. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's their loss though. Yeah, because well, if I you don't you want up, the cleanest you know, fade you know, ever, that's what you do. <laughs> It is, for sure. Man. So can you share some insight into specific skills or technique that are particularly important when working with diverse hair types and styles, including those in the LGBTQ community and queer space? Can you repeat that question? Can you share mm -hmm. some specific insight and specific skills and techniques? Some skills or techniques. That, that people particularly look for yeah, in that absolutely. space. Absolutely, absolutely. One, touch your stance. for sure, one important, which I think I've already discussed, is to keep the parietal ridge mm -hmm. as square as possible because okay. square equals masculine, okay. rounded equals more feminine. Right. right. Um, and I learned that not only from wearing it myself, mm -hmm. but from the, the uh, face chapter in Milady. Yes. Um, what haircut suits different face types. And I feel like just as long as you keep that haircut really square, then I feel like a person in the LGBTQ uh, plus will really see the difference. Because <clears throat> I've been told a lot that people feel like they get pixie cuts mm -hmm. more often than just your you know, mid fade or mid drop fade. So some bar, and I hope you guys heard that. Because most people think that more women, they would want some feminine, something round. But someone come in, yeah. Through the consultation, which you're supposed to do. Right. Absolutely. And them out because if you're trying to go for a round look and someone who's in the LGBTQ space or the queer space, you can you already feel uncomfortable. So they'll probably mm -hmm. walk out the shop really dissatisfied and won't sit up to the Exactly. Exactly. Well, for sure. And most people don't realize because most people want to give a woman this a, a an round overall shape. round shape, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, the consultation is definitely the most important part. And it's not only the talking, but it's the visual. So looking at some, what someone's wearing, their style, the way they talk, the way they move, and then um, just being created off of that. So if you're a barbershop owner, how can you foster or bridge that gap between that space and the employees? I the think clients and the staff. How do you it's got to start with you as the barbershop owner. You have to be inclusive. You have to show straight off, you know, this is a safe place for all people. And that's just going to trickle down, you know what I mean? But you got to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes it might be difficult for straight men, depending on who it is. If it's a, if it's a female transitioning or if it's a male transitioning. Because I think people look at two different yeah. aspects. You know, because most people are looking at a, a male transition. Right into a female and some straight men, that might really offend them and it might really get like... Why does that offend you? You know what I yeah, mean? If you don't understand it, that's fine, but everybody deserves basic human respect, you exactly. know? And sure. at the end of the day, I don't know why somebody doing something with their own body to make themselves happy Affects would offend you, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah. you know, sir, I think Are you intimidated? Kind of Probably. Yeah. It's easier to kind of, for most men, it's easier to accept a woman than a man transition. And I don't sure. know what that is. This, that's facts. I've never seen that. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is. Like, it's um, even in the, um, in the sports space, you see more men transferring and transitioning and playing women's sports. You rarely see any women transitioning and playing men's sports. Right. You know what I mean? That's a good point. And I feel like that that's a whole different topic. But at the end of the mm -hmm. day, those people are doing what makes them happy. Right. You know, whatever the statistics are, whatever, I don't care. I'm still going to show them respect. Even if I personally don't understand it, 
I'm going to mm. give you respect. Because it's nine, cause nine out of ten times, nobody's coming on there to hit on you. Yeah, you know I, mean? uh, yeah I feel like that's definitely a big part about it, is people feel threatened by it, and it's like, so it's not what, about that. So what can we do to make barbers comfortable? You said nobody's coming to what? What can we do to make them feel more comfortable with barbers? Because nobody's coming to hit on them. Nobody's coming to hit on them. Right. If you see somebody coming in there, who is queer, who is gay, whatever, they're not coming in to hit on you. So that's, the, make them that's the educating moment right there. Just because I'm a lesbian woman does not mean I like all women. And just because somebody is a gay man doesn't mean they like all men. If somebody's transitioning, you know, just like you got specifics, you got a type, we also do. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like I said, just because I'm a lesbian woman, that does not mean I'm attracted to every single woman. And that's something people need to understand. Just because this man is transitioning into a woman, they could still very well like women, you know? Mm -hmm. That doesn't determine their preferences. So, so bottom line is just be kind. 100%. percent that is service. You ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing. I also, yeah, I also really like, man, there's so many men that will come to, again, my shop is like basically 80% women, and there's a lot of men that will come to the women just because they're women. They sexualize our right. barbers because they're women. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that, right. that comes from the per. that's like a lot of work the person has to do that mm -hmm. thinks like they're coming to the shop just to hit on women, like, right. like barbers, like, well, you wouldn't come into the shop hitting on the male barbers, why are you hitting on us? Like, right. it's weird. And, and there's just some type of, so just a this form of disrespect. So, yeah, right. super disrespectful. And again, that's, that's work that person needs to do outside, on the outside because obviously they're struggling inside. That's crazy. I feel like, um, I don't know, but like, that's a that's a strong topic, but like the sexualization, because I I could definitely see where that comes from, because I've known some some weird like some when weird I was in barber school, there. Mm -hmm. um, there was this there used to be this old man that used to come in and freaking just go to straight all the women. He didn't know he didn't want no girl no guys touching his yeah, hair, absolutely. but it was just you can tell, but you know, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah I was like, but that's so weird, bro. Right? Yeah, <laughs> no, like, yeah. Um, I was in the barber shop. A man came in. I could tell that he was kind of frisky. He was just kind of weird. Yeah. And um, I really didn't want to do his hair. And I know we can decline service, but you can't say why. You decline service because mm -hmm. that could be a lawsuit. Yeah. Um, but he's sitting in my chair and he starts going like off the wall talking about, oh, I've seen your profile picture and I want to frame your profile picture. And I'm like, sir, you're just in here to get a haircut service. I need you to, Jeez. I need you to leave, Jeez. homie. But he kept going disrespectful i won't say it on the podcast because it's inappropriate but um i was like yo i'm never doing that guy's haircut ever again and i told the owner yo i'm i'll, I'll stop working here if you don't you know well, let me ask you a question i helped you see barber. right so what if a, 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 a barber say hey i don't want to cut a, someone who's in that space would you feel offended if i was the barbershop owner no, the, the barber, like Jordan's barber, you come in, like, I use the stuff to offend it because the guy, he kind of felt that vibe and he didn't want to, and he was offensive to you. And you said you got an opportunity to turn the haircut out. How would you feel if someone like Jordan say someone come in in the LGBTQ space, plus space, and queer I mean, at the end of the day, Jordan has the right to For do sure. that, but, but then I feel that's, like that's showing his true colors. Yeah. That's going to hurt our feelings, of course, but we're just going to go to another barbershop where we feel included. Yeah, right. That's taking money out of your own pocket. But he's not going to be sexualizing it, no, no, me. No, because no, it's two different, two different, two different scenarios. scenarios. I, was I was thinking about some barbers would be like, who do want to decline that? Who do want to decline that? You know what I mean? That's your right. Yeah. That is your right. I feel like, like, like Clark said, Definitely showing your true colors, yeah, for sure. Even if it's your that's that's messed up. How does that's me up. liking girls affect you cutting my hair? Just just think about it. You ain't got to answer it, but how does that affect you in any way? And why would you turn me away based off something you're assuming? Because I haven't even told you I like girls. There's people when they're not educated. Yeah. When they're afraid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you are working with the general public. You don't really know who you're going to Right. You know what I mean? So. And so the reason I brought that up is to let people know. Also, this is a teacher moment. Yeah. Don't be afraid. 
if they don't want to cut their hair, they yeah. can send them to me and I'll cut their hair. You feel me? <laughs> I say, if, if if anything, it's good that they tell you that they don't want you to cut your hair. Because if they did and they probably didn't, then it's probably going to end up being bad. Exactly. Or, or They're not going to put their own. It's, it's, yeah. it's better. I guess it's better off just to be honest mm -hmm. right. than just accepting somebody based off like, oh, I, I got to cut his hair. Um, you know, so. And then be true to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just like, I'm going to be true to myself. Be true to yourself as a barber. If somebody makes you uncomfortable for whatever the reason. You know, you, you got to be true to yourself at the end of the day. Though, if you do, go, if right. you are going to do that like that. I would say, like, he was not sexualizing me and he was just a weird old guy. Yeah. He probably would just bite the bullet and cut mm -hmm. his hair because he was an old guy. He probably just had no one to talk to, honestly. And it was just like, at that point, it's like a 10, 15 minute haircut. You barely got hair on your head. And mm -hmm. then it's just out the door and it's you turn, whatever. So, but. I mean, yeah, this yeah, is it's a, a teaching moment. The objective of this pocket is to make you feel more comfortable for sure and to make you have a little bit of understanding and realize that people are people right people are people at the end, end of the day right if you were a woman in this industry whether you're a master barber you're a cosmetologist whatever you are doing in this industry um I mean, we do, we come to work to work. We don't come to work right. to find a boyfriend. We don't come right. to work to be flirted with. Right. We love what we do and we have a passion for it. And when a man or a woman or anybody walks into our shop and disrespects us like that, you know, don't, this is my livelihood. This is what I love. Please don't come into my shop or anybody's shop for that matter and flirt with them or make them feel uncomfortable. Right. This is, this is their safe space. you are coming in like that. That's just. One of my key phrases I always use is um, education change. Right. And until people are educated and understand where, where, where people are, you will, there will always be some preconceived notion. Mm -hmm. There will always be some kind of misunderstanding. And I think it's really just a misunderstanding because once you get educated and you understand, your, your perception is not that reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Everybody on the hill. Everybody, some people just come in and they're just tired from work and whether they're in this space, that space, they just want to head cut and be able to go home. But that's it. Right. You know, and as as bar, yeah. If you know, in that space as well, the, the point of the, the plus space, you don't want to come to be objectified, right? You don't want to come to be respect, disrespected because, yeah, I, I'm a you a boss barber too. You know what I mean? And anything that any other barber can do, you can do too as well. And you just want to be treated just just like a normal barber coming. And yeah, if we want to chop that build a relationship with friends after that, so be it. Cool. Exactly. Okay. How do you uh, separate the line between uh, being friends uh, with your clients versus bringing in friends and then they're your clients? How do you separate the line of professionalism in that? I mean, well, you, when you give them a service, you got to be professional across the board. 100%. Um, if it's your, your mother, your father, your cousin, one of your best friends, you have to treat everybody so you give them the equal amount of treatment. Right. The same way. Um, and how do you separate that over time? Some people, especially the clients of Lauren, who you've had for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, people can basically see your reaction when you come in, when they come in, because instead of it might be a pound, it might be a handshake. Instead of it might be a handshake, it might be a brace. You know what I mean? So that way you're going to differentiate the type of relationship and friendship you have and the treatment you have. Obviously, someone that you've been with for a long time, 10 years, Five, ten, fifteen years of friendship. You have a different type of love. Yeah, it's, uh, like well, I, I mean, so I always try to treat, try to treat everybody the same. But sometimes you know, it takes a little bit for, especially for a client, to actually feel comfortable to where you can actually be kind of yourself a little bit. I think that we have to start with ourselves. You know, it's it's really simple. Be a good person, and if you are faced with a situation where you're uncomfortable don't be reactive you know take it as a learning moment take it as a teaching moment and better that person don't belittle them don't tear them down for not knowing something at the end of the day yeah. a lot of people just don't know how to address us or how we want to be included you know what i mean so use that opportunity to really speak for your lgbt people and educate somebody versus being offended or being reactive right. and that's on both sides right that's on, on both, both sides, sides saying sure. we'd want it to be treated the exact same way like I would. I know I would. I mean, right. But that's the way I look at it. I want to treat everybody the same way how I want to be treated. You want to be respectful. You want to be acknowledged. It's that the basic simple things is, hey, hello, how you doing? With a smile. How's your day going? 
that goes a long way. And so you, well, even if they are like, if they're in a wheelchair or an older person, uh, always try to help them out, even if getting out of the car, opening the door for them, helping them sit down, lowering the chair before they sit down. Yeah. Make sure like, you hey, lock I'll, that chair. Yeah. I made that mistake once before. <laughs> no, I've seen lock it a too. But yeah, stuff like that. It's little stuff like that. That goes a long way. What do you think uh, could help build community in the in the shop? How do you build community from outside to bring in? Uh, build community. Um, we talked about this one time, didn't we? Too. I think we did. Like having like a little board for all your uh, businesses, like or people. Uh, we talked about this before. I can't remember exactly what we said, but. I think it's important to kind of grow and grow as a family. Yeah, you have to patronize each other, do things, check up on each other, um, let people know that you care, um, go to dinner, um, do, do supportive things besides the barbershop, um, do other things that includes the industry, do some community service. I say like hold like free events or yeah, free haircuts do, and stuff some, like that. Be, build with your community. Because when people see you together building with your community, they really want to like, wanna grab you, hold you, squeeze you, and, 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 and be appreciative of the love that you're giving because your community is the one that's going to patronize your business. So be one with, with your community of giving back. That helps a lot to mm-hmm. foster that growth. And also being able to talk to your clients and stuff, people that come in. Uh, I mean, you never know. That word of mouth is also just a big it's, it's a big, big thing. That's like the yeah. biggest yeah. advertisement, man. Word yeah. of I mouth. Have so many people are just like kids from high school. But yeah, bro, like, People that I've never even talked to before in my life would be like over <laughs> here at Elizabethan or like somewhere far, and I'm like, "Bro, I've heard about you," and I'm like, "That's crazy." And I've, I've, it's wild. You should, that goes up that you far. should also advertise in the airport. You should get a brochure and put that in the airport so anyone who flies in. Look at that gym. Look at that gym. Look at that gym. The airport. Airports are crazy. Walk tra- like foot traffic, so I'm, yeah. mm-hmm. I would definitely say yeah, airports. That, yeah, that's a gym. And, and, and purpose doesn't even think about stuff like that. No. Yeah, you Where to market your business. Because yes. people come in off the plane, they want to know who the best. Look. They might be moving in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Where area, yeah. Yes. That'd be dope. Yeah. That's actually smart. This podcast was so dope. Yeah, that's fire. That's fire. You said it every time, Jordan. Yeah, that's fire. I like it every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, did you guys, what did you guys like about the podcast today? And what did you guys pick up from? I like that you guys were uh, open to hearing me um, talk about this specific topic because again, you know, it's not being talked about enough, I feel like. So thank you for, you know, giving um, us a space. Of course. Yes, ma'am. I think that representation is just so important. You know, growing up watching movies, I didn't see women like me going to barbershops. I didn't see women like me. So just being able to come on here and represent for the people who do look like me, who who do come from where I come from and stuff. So. That's big because hopefully somebody out there, they're going to see it and think, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. I can also be successful in a male-dominated industry. I can also just be myself Mm -hmm. without people judging me. And honestly, just grateful for both of y'all giving us that space. You know, it's not often that two straight men are willing to sit down and listen to your views Mm -hmm. because a lot of it don't apply to y'all. You know what I mean? Y'all weren't affected by it. So it was cool to have that open environment to do so. And I remember when like Aaliyah was... And I didn't know she was transitioning. We, we were good friends. She'd always come down and get a haircut because she just wanted to get a haircut by me. And one thing that she mentioned was like, Craig, I remember I was coming down to get my haircut. You never judged me. You made me feel so comfortable. And I was going through so much at that time. And I was just happy for you being my barber, getting my, getting my haircut. I'm like, I was just... You're just being yourself. Being myself. Exactly. And we formed a bond and had a, a friendship. And But you're a good person. And exactly. I, you got good qualities. <laughs> Not everybody's like that. Thank you. But at the same time, I think people that understand, be aware of their surroundings. Yes. Be aware of the room. Yes. Because people are coming in just for service, and some things that you say, do, or how you react can really offend some people. And then Absolutely. It's, it's kind of hard to be in control over something you don't have control over. Like mm-hmm. At the same time, it's like, because you might be not, you might want to be that professional in your shop. You but don't you know. might be surrounded by people that are not. That's so on point, you know, dude. That's uh, so on that's what, that's what it's like. That's why I said, like, the stu- like you know, that's there's some people that are meant for a barbershop, and there's some people that are meant for mm-hmm. studio. So right. you that's can so create awful. that vibe in the studio that you want for the people that you want, and you can just be yourself instead of being that one person that's standing out between amongst the... The crowd. Yeah, the crowd. I, I feel yeah. we can just, we can create, like, two or three more podcasts of this. because There's so, so many can, topics. Yeah, there's yeah, so many more. But, but I think the important thing is, is respect. 100%. The important thing is, is, is be nice, be kind. 
Be humble. Be humble. 100%. You know what I mean? Because this wonderful industry of ours, there, no one should be turned away. No one should be turned away this wonderful industry of what we have. Because the barber industry is, it's trending in the right direction. It's trending and it's, it's really making some people, barbers Progress. are making six figures. Barbers are making seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. Easy. Barbers are buying new sports cars and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. dude, right? He's bought a sports nah, car. Nah, right? we, we, we let my business like that. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Barker's watching. <laughs> nah, I'm, like, nah, I'm just joking, man. But I love Jordan. I mean, we come on the podcast and we have fun. We come up. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we're hoping to take this on the road. Just got a um, call, an invite this morning to bring the podcast to Las Vegas. It's so be dope. <laughs> I already got it blocked off. I'm ready. I'm you ready. Ready. Jordan I'm ready. already? Yeah. Where's my invite, right. first of all? Huh? <laughs> I, 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 right? <laughs> hey, if you're around and you're able to come to it, come on. We're going to do some that. Ocean Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call everybody and talk to them about yeah, coming through real. that one. But now, I really appreciate that. Every time you do a podcast, it's so fun and it goes so fast. It didn't seem like we've been there for an hour, have it? Nah, I feel like we just started. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we go, what's the last in word you want to say to someone who is in this space? who's thinking about being a master barber or thinking about going to a barbershop to get a service? Two full questions. What, what can you say, what would you like to say to both of them to encourage them to make that transition or just kind of ease their mind? Do it because it'll help you grow in many ways as a person. Um, just, yeah, that, it just, it helped me in so many ways. I know it could help other people in so many ways. Learning about people, learning about yourself. Because at the end of the day, you want to seek validation from within and not from without. There's probably several people who want to who want to ask some questions because again, we're in like 70, 77 different countries around the world. And if someone want to reach out to you and ask you a question, where can they reach out to you? And on Instagram, um, entrepreneur underscore twenty two. Um, I'll have to look at the spelling because it's pretty long. But um, on Instagram, I'll definitely we can put it underneath the Instagram video. Um, but reach out to me on that, and then I'll get back to you pretty soon. What about you, uh, Clark? What do you want to say to a, 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 a barber, who wants, someone who wants to be people are, a barber license? They're so scared to fail. People are so f scared to fail that they won't even try. And the thing is, you not trying is guaranteeing your failure. And on the other side of that is your success. Right. So as soon as you try, you're already succeeding. You, you keep putting it off and keep putting it off. You're just guaranteeing you are going to fail. Mm. So, I mean, at the end of the day, don't talk about it, be about it. You, you got to put your words into action. Action, action, action. Sure. Piggybacking off of that, no means next opportunity. Mm. So, I would say just just keep going, keep trying, keep pushing. Clark had it perfect. Wow. And if you got any questions, you want to ask me, I'm on Instagram at uh, Ace of Fades TN. Mm. That's dope. Because I'm pretty sure people will hit you up. Because every time we have a show, people always like send messages to me. Yeah, uh, Like some questions. That's so. amazing that you make Love the chance like to that. educate, that's yeah. That's good. I mean, it's an opportunity. Because absolutely. that's what this podcast, podcast started out as. Um, Barber College Success to kind of educate people, kind of give students an opportunity to kind of see what it is to be into this industry and what they're looking forward to and how to make their transition in school really seamless. Right. What, you, what, you, what, what can you add to that, Jordan? What can you say to someone trying to get into this space, like the, um, the queer space, who trying to be a barber, or someone from the LBGTQ plus trying to get into this industry? Mm. Well, like they said, just don't be scared to try. Don't be scared to, to fail. Don't be scared to be told no. I mean, he's got to keep trying. He's got to keep doing anything. And I mean, obviously the confidence, what you need is just having being confident in yourself and, um, yeah, just, just believe in yourself and you got it. Yep, yep. <clears throat> um, brought to you again by Feedspot, ranking us in the top 25 podcasts in the world. Um, actually in the top five in the U.S. Um, thank you for that ranking, Feedspot. And one of our sponsors, Colossal Brand. Check them out, colossalbrand.org. And again, appreciate you. We are Crown Cuts Academy in Johnson City and in Bristol. We enroll students the first Tuesday of every month. Um, look us up if you want to change your career, want to look for something profitable. You want to just meet people and just have fun and just and be yourself and express yourself. We have careers in barbering, cosmetology, aesthetics, and nails. Um, one of the best. I wouldn't change it for nothing coming into this cosmetology industry. I think it's wonderful. There's so much more space for so many people. There are people making really good careers out of this industry. 
Um, some people doing some really amazing things, and I would I want to share some news with you guys. I just got um from the state of Tennessee. Just got an award for the small business of the year in all of Tennessee. There's seven million people in the state of Tennessee, and I got an award for um, the small business of the year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and um, on top of that, I got invited to the White House to pick up the uh, award. Okay. So I'll be going to the White cool. House Sorry. next, what? <laughs> next month. That's um, amazing. Well, he do it, he do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but again, Barbacar Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Cronkus Academy Bristol and Craig Charles of Cronkus Academy downtown Johnson City. And now also Proficient Nail Academy. Come check us out. Peace.